but Jackie Sparr had to go halfway around the world for an answer to her mysterious illness. In 2001, 15-year-old Jackie Sparr was always on the go. I was running from school to softball practice. I was playing piano and hanging out with my friends and going to dances and doing everything a teenager should be doing. <laughs> Growing up, Jefflyn was always very feisty. She was always just a go-getter. Once you put her mind to something, whatever it would be, she would accomplish it and accomplish it really well. But in March of 2001, Jackie's world begins to fall apart. She was in a new high school. She was making friends. And she went to softball practice, and she was really excited to join the team. She wanted at least to make JV at that year. And in order to make the team, you have to run a mile. And it was a really cold day, and I remember running around that track, and all of a sudden I had a stop. I couldn't keep going because I had such pain in my chest. Each breath coming in was just like a knife through my chest. I rushed her to the doctor. They stopped everything they were doing to make sure she was okay. Jackie's doctor examines her and tells her she has costochondritis, a painful inflammation of the sternum and ribs. The causes are unknown. And fortunately with costochondritis, there doesn't appear to be any sort of cure or pill for it. The doctor tells you to rest, put on heat compresses. They assumed at that point it would heal itself and go away. But in the following weeks, the pain Jackie feels in her chest spreads throughout her entire body. It would be in her legs, her arms, her shins, her ankles, uh, her chin. It would sort of be waves going through, sometimes like a sledgehammer. I'd be in class and pain would just shoot down my leg and I would just collapse the floor. She'd actually be on the floor shaking and the school would be quickly give us a call or they'd order an ambulance to take her away. Three weeks later, Jackie sees a rheumatologist who runs blood tests as well as a bone and tissue scan. Mid-May, after all the blood tests came back, they finally had a diagnosis of what was wrong with her and the diagnosis was spondylarthropathy. My immediate reaction was, could you spell that for me? Spondylarthropathy is a form of arthritis, or joint inflammation, that affects the spine. I was ecstatic. We know what it is. Let's go take care of it. Jacqueline should be on the road to recovery. The treatment at that point was the NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. And unfortunately, as weeks went by, we just kept having a child in a lot of pain. She wasn't out with her friends anymore. She wasn't playing sports anymore. She was just on the couch, you know, kind of incapacitated. Still unable to determine the cause of Jackie's pain, her doctors continue to treat the symptoms. The doctors are putting me on one arthritis medication after another. All I was doing was just popping pills in my mouth, trying to get some relief. I was on Oxycontin, which was like this huge narcotic supposed to help pain. It didn't even help that much. When your sister is in so much pain and given every painkiller on the market and it doesn't work, you just want to kill the doctors, you know? I mean, like, why isn't this working? There must be a reason. For the last six months, Jackie Sparr has been suffering from mysterious debilitating pain all over her body, and doctors can't explain why. A month ago, she had to stop attending high school, and now walking is so unbearable that Jackie needs a wheelchair. The pain was so severe that there would be some days, I remember, where she'd just say to cut off her legs. Then, more than a year after her pain began, she experiences a frightening new symptom. She'd be at a piano lesson and her fingers would start to hurt. They would get fixed and tight and like mangled. It would be almost like claws or like, you know when you see weird bark of trees, it's like all like wrapped over in itself. Almost like you'd see in some movies with these monsters like this. And she couldn't pick up silverware, couldn't hold a pen, couldn't even open up a door with her hand. My muscles were spasming and getting stuck in that position. And it was just so painful. And it wouldn't be for days, it wouldn't be for a few minutes. Jackie's doctors are perplexed by this strange condition. The doctors ruled out so many different diseases or things that it could have caused it, whether it was zinc, copper, malaria, Lyme disease. They just ruled out a number of diseases which they thought she didn't have. Every doctor would say, I'm going to get the answer for you. I'll, I'll tell you what's wrong. But it's not like I believe them anymore at that point. You know, I'd sort of roll my eyes and just be like, sure. <laughs> you, you tell me what's wrong with me. <laughs> Go ahead. And it was, I didn't have any confidence in their statements anymore. Finally, the primary rheumatologist suggested that she might have what's called RND, reflexive neurovascular dystrophy. 
Reflex neurovascular dystrophy is a condition where the spinal cord short circuits and sends abnormal pain signals to the brain and to nerves, causing extreme pain throughout the body. So it wasn't an arthritic problem, but more of a pain syndrome problem stemming from her spinal cord. They're basically telling me that my nerves are not sending the right signals and I just have to retrain these signals. He suggested we go see a specialist in that field at a hospital out in Seattle. Desperate for any kind of help, Jackie agrees to fly across the country to a hospital in Seattle. And I was inpatient there for three weeks and six hours a day of intense physical therapy. And I was in pain the entire time. I'd be doing an exercise and collapse in pain. You're just supposed to, almost like a stroke victim, learn all over again how to move, how to walk through pain. There was a day where I was vomiting and, and I was just like, you know, I need to go lie down, like, I don't feel well. And she just like picked me up by the arm and was like, keep going, keep doing it. After three weeks of intense physical therapy, Jackie graduates from the program and is released. She's still in pain, but has learned to function through her discomfort. What she did get out of the Seattle hospital is that she was learning to walk a bit more and get through more of the pain, so she was in less of the wheelchair. And with this improvement, Jackie's doctors begin to suspect that her illness may not be physical after all. A number of the doctors we were seeing would say, Jacqueline, there's nothing medically wrong with you. Is this because of your mind? It wouldn't even cross my mind that it would be possible to create this amount of agony for yourself. I couldn't even imagine from the doctor's point of view how you could even think that. Jackie's doctors suggest that she may be growing too reliant on her parents and losing her sense of independence. Which is really funny because all through her life she's always been on her own. I've always sent her away to camp. She's always you know, traveled by herself. But with that being said by the doctor, we said, why don't we send her on a program during the summer? So we signed her up for a program where she spent a couple of weeks in Madrid and a couple of weeks in Barcelona. The progress Jackie made in physical therapy has given her the confidence to travel to Spain despite her illness. It was the very first day there, and I had arrived really early before everyone else, and there was one other girl there, and we started talking. And like little did I know that this girl was going to change my life. For the past two years, Jackie Spar has been living with debilitating pain, and no one can tell her why. At the suggestion of doctors who think this all might be in Jackie's head, her parents send her abroad so she can gain some independence. On her first day in Spain, something amazing happens. There was one other girl there, and we started talking. We realized we had a lot of the same symptoms. We would seen a lot of the same doctors, and we had a lot of the same misdiagnosis, which was really freaky. She said she had Lyme disease. Jackie can't believe what she's hearing. She calls her parents from Spain. She goes, Mom, there's a girl here on my trip, and she's just like me. She was just diagnosed with Lyme disease. I said, you've got to be joking. You've been tested for Lyme disease. There's no way. Everybody has said time and time again, no way, no how. She says, Mom, seriously. Despite her skepticism, Jackie's mom gets the number of the doctor who diagnosed her new friend. A month later, when Jackie is back from Spain, she arrives for her appointment with Dr. Bernard Raxlin. What struck you about Jackie was that she was just disgusted with the whole medical profession. She just wanted to throw us all into the water. I mean, all these bells and whistles and all these great degrees and big hospitals. She didn't have a whole lot of faith at that point in time that there was going to be a different scenario. Dr. Raxlin begins to ask Jackie a series of questions. And it was just amazing that like I was checking off these things on the symptom list. All of my symptoms were on this one list. It, it was all there. It was just like, oh, wow. She was amazed to find that almost half the list applied to her. And they kind of put us at ease in saying, you know what? We have to run the test, but we really think it is Lyme disease. Lyme disease is caused by the bite of a deer tick infected with a bacteria called Borrelia. The tick embeds itself into the skin and discharges the Borrelia into the bloodstream, which can then wreak havoc throughout the body. The earlier phase of Lyme disease, it stays mostly in the skin. When it gets into the bloodstream and into other organs, including the heart, the brain, the joints, the muscles, 
becomes more difficult to treat. You get pain, you get swelling, and then there's the general symptoms where you're exhausted. I mean, you can't even get up to uh, brush your teeth. You, you lie in bed 18 hours a day, and it's a lot. I mean, would you know what to make of it if somebody came in with all those symptoms? In addition to its confusing symptoms, standard tests for Lyme disease can often be unreliable and give false negatives, like in Jackie's case. In the testing of Lyme disease, mostly there's one or two kits that have been used across the spectrum of most labs. And there are many more sensitive tests or different ways it can be evaluated, and most physicians are not aware of that. He also explains to me the fact that bacteria hides and it doesn't flow as easily in the blood, so the chances of that one vial of blood carrying the bacteria is very low. Dr. Raxlin performs a variety of tests on Jackie and sends her blood work to three different laboratories across the country for analysis. She tests positive for exposure to the Borrelia bacteria. We wanted to open champagne. <laughs> I mean, because now that we had an answer and we knew what was causing this, we could then go find the cure and find out how to fight it. Chronic Lyme disease is treated with long-term antibiotics. And after a difficult year and a half on treatment, Jackie's symptoms finally begin to subside. It took a lot of time and a lot of waking up each morning and being like, okay, I'm going to hook up to the IV and I'm going to push through today. But, you know, I got there and I've gone on my life and I'm functioning, so it's very good. Jacqueline is such a fighter, so strong-willed, that she was able to graduate on time with her high school class. Jackie is also extremely lucky. If her Lyme disease hadn't been caught at all, her condition would have gotten even worse. If she hadn't been treated with aggressive antibiotic therapy, she would have probably had pain for the rest of her life and probably would have manifested more neurological symptoms over the course of time. Jackie has gone on to college and feels better than she has in years, but she still fights to keep her Lyme disease under control. Does the bacteria ever leave your system? No. Does the bacteria stay in remission for many, many years? The answer is yes. The Lyme bug actually did find a very tough person to bite because she's just not going to give up. I'm still fighting. I'm still, you know, pushing forward each morning. I'm still get up each morning and being like, oh gosh, I have to hook up the IV and take this many amount of pills each day. And it's horrible, I'm not gonna lie, but it's my life. And if that's what I have to do in order to make the rest of my life really good and to make the rest of my life what I want it to be, then I'll do that.